Hi everyone, welcome to a new video. Thanks for joining me today. So in this video, I am going to be working with colored pencil on pastel matte again. So I have done, done a few pieces now on pastel matte with colored pencil and I like it so much. I really like the look of colored pencil on pastel matte, especially in combination with pastels. But today I wanted to do a smaller study with purely colored pencil on dark gray pastel matte and that's going to be a horse eye a blue horse eye really beautiful and um, as always i made this for patreon so the full real-time narrated tutorial is available on there for the four dollar tier and um, in this video i'm just going to walk you through the time lapse and explain what i've done so let's get started I am working with Faber Castell Polychromos um, on dark grey pastel mat as I said. The size is 5 by 7 inches and the reference is from Pixabay. And I already did the sketch, you can't really see it, it's very very light. So let's zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. You can see the reference on screen as well so you can see which what I'm going to work towards and let's get started with the drawing so what I like to do first is outlining the outlines again but with the colored pencil so I do the initial sketch with graphite but graphite and colored pencil on pastel matte don't go well together so I make sure that my graphite lines are super light almost invisible and then uh, when I start drawing I outline the darkest areas with a colored pencil so I can see the sketch a little better and um, that the outlines work well together with the rest of the colors I'm going to add. So the eye is very dark, the outlines of the eye are very dark because the skin is very dark. So I did the outline with Payne's Grey, which is a dark grey. And right after I started with adding the colors. So I could see a little bit of white in the iris um, on the top half and on the right side. So I added a little bit of white just to make sure that I don't forget that lightness in there. So I don't lose it. And after that I started adding the blues. So in this eye you can see a lot of different blues, also pinks and purples. So I tried to add all those in there. I used a sky blue, cobalt blue, um, a turquoise, all those colors. On Patreon you will have the color list, so um, I am listing the exact colors on there. And I built up the colors from light to dark. So on pastel matte you can do light on top of dark, but I still like to work from light to dark a little bit with a light hand so that the paper doesn't get saturated too fast. This way I can add many many layers um, without the paper getting polished. So for this initial first two layers I just like to just put down every color that I see. Um, they don't need to be very well blended yet. That all happens in the layers after. And after the first two layers, I start glazing. So then I pick another color. Um, for instance, if I want the eye to look more purplish, I pick violet and then I glaze the color on top of all the um, underlying layers. And by glazing, I just uh, change the tone of the paper a little bit. I change the tone of the layer without actually putting a lot of color on there. And when glazing like that, you bring together the colors. So that's going to blend and mix the colors together. So I glaze quite a lot actually, until I find that the layers are dense enough. And then I can start adding the smaller details on top. So what I did for the pupil, um, horse eyes don't have round pupils. So um, that's very important. They are quite rectangular shaped 
So for the pupil, I started with a base layer of Caput Morton Violet and a few blues. So in the anthurene blue I used and dark indigo because the pupil is never completely black. If you just use black for the pupil, the eye will look quite dead or that's what I feel. So after that base layer of the blue and the violet, I add black. And when you push too hard on pastel matte, you will get a glare in the black. So I didn't want that. So I tried to add the black with quite a light hand. Um, so I tried to make it dark enough, but not like polish the paper. And after that, I could move on to the bottom eyelid which is a bit out of focus on the reference, so I tried to recreate that. And as you can see, I left the top half of the iris quite, quite undetailed, because I wanted to finish that when the lashes were finished. And I'd have to draw the lashes on top of the iris. If there are too many layers on there, you can't draw the lashes anymore. So I left that top half undetailed and with not so many layers and then when the lashes are done i am finishing off the iris completely the skin next to the iris on the left is quite dark so for that i started off with paints gray and dark sepia so dark sepia is a warm tone paints gray is a cool tone so i combined those together to get a, a nice neutral dark tone to start with and then there are some wrinkles in there, so I added those with black. And then with a lighter gray, I added some highlights in between the wrinkles, so that skin really pops. And after that, I decided that I wanted to do the lashes. So I wasn't sure how I would approach the lashes yet before I started. Um, but as I was drawing, I figured that... I should draw the lashes just right on top of the pastel mat without any under layers because the lashes are quite orange. So if I would have drawn that dark skin first, um, that orange wouldn't look very good on top of that dark layer or that's what I think. So I did the lashes first with uh, different types of yellows and oranges. Also, the tips of the lashes were very light, so I highlighted those with ivory. And then after that, I drew the skin around the lashes. And I do think that looks quite good, so I think it was a good decision. To sit decision. It's a very hard word. Um, so yeah, I would approach this the same way if I uh, do an eye like this again. And then after I drew the dark skin around the lashes, I could add some details. So I added some details on top of the lashes again with um, some lighter yellow and some ivory to really make the lashes pop. And then I also drew the smaller lashes on the left with Caput Mortem and Venetian Red. Um, and those are overlapping the iris, as you can see. So I did that first. Then after that, I filled in the dark upper eyelid with black and different types of grays. So I did that in between the lashes again. So studies like this these really teach you to look at color, look at shapes. And I, I didn't want this to be like hyper realistic. I wanted to give it the right feel and the right like 3D effect um, without spending too much time on it. So that's what I tried to recreate here. I really wanted to make it pop without adding every single detail in there. So for that, you have to... Um, use the right colors and create the right contrast. So for the upper eyelid, you can see a shine there on the left, just above the lashes. I created that with ivory and I also added some green in there, some turquoise and then different types of blues. And that gives it that really nice shine.
And after adding the base layers on the top eyelid, I could add the dark wrinkles with black. And what's so nice about working on pastel matte is that you can add light on top of dark. So I could also add very nice light little hairs on the top eyelid, as you can see, which worked really well. So as long as you don't press too much um, it, with the first layers, you can add very small little details on top of dark under layers. And that's what I really, really like about pastel matte. So after that, I did the bottom eyelid, which had some nice detail as well, but I left it quite undetailed. I wanted the main focus of the viewer's eye to be on the iris and the lashes and not so much on everything around. And that was basically it. So a small recap of what I've done um, for the real detailed tutorial. You can have a look on Patreon. Your support is much appreciated. And yeah, let me know what you think of this drawing. If you want to see more work, work on pastel mats. Um, I hope you like it because I really like it. So I really want to do more pieces like this. And then I want to thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.